everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about the Anastasia Beverly Hills subculture palette. There's been a lot of controversy around this palette but I'm here to give you my opinion on it. I watch a lot of different reviews, some being positive, some being more negative and the main things I've seen are people thinking that it's powdery, that it doesn't blend, and some people think yeah it's powdery but it's beautiful and the colors are amazing. I do have to give Anastasia props. The color selection in here is really beautiful. You have a range of cool tone colors and warm neutrals as well. So I'm going to go ahead and create a look for you guys today and give you my thoughts on the palette. And I really want it to work for me. I bought this palette myself. So I'm going to go ahead and prime my eyes real quick and we'll get started. To prime my eyes today, I'll be using the Urban Decay Primer Potion. Literally, most of the mascaras and primers I use are normally samples, just because I get them when with like reward points or in the Sephora play boxes, so I'm constantly testing out different ones and just using them up. I find, especially since mascaras expire um, pretty quickly, it's nice to have a lot of different little samples that you can just go through, because sometimes I find it hard to go through a whole mascara. Now that my eyes are primed, I'm going to be setting it with the shade Dawn in the palette right here. So it has a little bit more color to it than I thought. It's like a little peachy orange undertone, but that's okay gives us a little base and just sets the primer. So I'm not t sure what type of look to create today, but I'm just going to wing it and go along with this mini tutorial. So on a little fluffy brush, the next shade I'm going to go into is, I think Roxy is going to be my transition shade. So I'll just go ahead and show you the color right here. This is Roxy. All the little um, digs that you see in the palette are just my claw marks from when I was like swatching it and playing around with it. Not playing around with it, but showing it to my Snapchat followers. So I'll insert my little Snapchat here if you want to go ahead and follow me on there. I was watching Wayne Goss's review last night. He says he likes this palette. And he says the thing is that these shadows he believes are pressed pigments rather than a normal eyeshadow and he says mattes tend to have more fallout than shimmers and he went along to show in different eyeshadow palettes that that was the case and different eyeshadow companies as well. So far the shadow blended really nicely. This is one of the more neutral transition colors and I, I like how it looks on the eye. You know what, I'm going to take on another fluffy brush, let me find one. I haven't seen anyone use the purple no, I have seen people use the purple. I haven't seen anyone use this like gray mercury shade, so I'm going to go in with this shade right here. And I'm working with this palette in the theory that it, they are pressed pigments. So what I'm doing is I'm packing on the, the darker colors and then very slightly blending them out, but mainly placing them where they will be in this look rather than just blowing it out. So, so far I haven't seen any issues with this gray. I've actually been using just the tiniest bit of product and working up the color rather than going in with a bunch of the pigment right away. You know, I'm going to go in with the metallic shade in this palette. From what I've seen, it's really good. So this is shade Adorn, and I'm going to use it dry, I believe, because I don't have my setting spray with me right now. I, didn't, I forgot to bring it. So this is the shade. Of course, any metallic normally looks better when the brush is wet. So far, I have no fallout under my eye right here. The little glitter that you see is from the highlight. I remember what I was going to say earlier. I was going to say that Bob's Beauty said that the Sephora Pro Collection palettes, I don't own any of them personally, but she said they had around the same amount 
or more fallout than this palette here. So I thought that was something interesting to keep in mind. My thing is, I think Anastasia is just held to such a really high standard because um, the brand itself has produced so many good quality items that people expect nothing but the best from them. And also, with this palette, even though I'm enjoying it, I know that a lot of people are not, and I feel that's also because Anastasia might have put in a lot more effort into making sure that these shadows swatch nicely rather than the the level of use not usability but how easy it is to work with the shadows because a lot of people a lot of palettes when they don't get a good um, review it's because they didn't swatch well on like the arms so for example the Jaclyn Hill palette but then everyone ended up loving it when they used it on the eye so I think Anastasia might have focused more on how they were going to swatch than maybe how user friendly the shadow was going to be. And the reason I wanted to use these colors was number one, um, Roxy was controversial. This one YouTuber, she was like swirling her brush and all the powder was falling out. So I wanted to go ahead and use Roxy myself. The most powdery shadow that I noticed in my palette was Dawn, that first shade when I was setting my eye. Uh, I wanted to use Mercury because I didn't really see anyone using that shade. Everyone was focusing on the the blue and the green. I'm definitely going to be creating another look with this palette on my channel soon. And then I did see a lot of people using Adorn and everyone liked it wanted, and said it was like kind of like a normal Anastasia shadow. So I went ahead and used it and yes, it is beautiful on the eyes. I think a little bit of destiny on my lower lash line. It's like this army green color. So I took it a little too far down right there but I'm going to clean that up with a bit of setting powder. I'm going to go ahead and add some inner corner highlight, mascara and lashes. The mascara I'm going to be using today is the Better Than Sex mascara and I'm going to be using these little house of lashes. I'm back and I just put on my lashes, mascara, and I added a little bit of highlight on my brow bone and inner corner and on the inner corner I kind of brought it on the inner part of the lower lash line just to give it more of a pop since that um, Destiny color was so dark. So I want to give you guys, I don't want to say these are my final thoughts on the Subculture palette. There's definitely a few more looks I want to create with it before I give my final verdict. I did want to recreate um, Tina's look, so I'm going to be doing that super soon. And I also will be cre recreating Jamie Charles's um, glitter freckle look. Um, so stay tuned for that. I want to say my initial thoughts on the Subculture palette. I did not have any problem with it. I think it's a beautiful palette. Yes, it has follow. Yes, many palettes do have follow. If that's a problem for you, um, I recommend just tapping off the excess from your brush. And for me, I didn't get it all everywhere. I I tap so lightly into these shadows. I'm going to even demonstrate for you guys how lightly I tapped into these shadows. Let's go into Roxy right here. I literally just did that. One tap, not even two, maybe two. And you get a little bit of excess and you just blow it off and you tap it off on the palette yes a little bit but then you have the pigment right there you have to work and build up these shadows if you go on with a ton of shadow at one point that's why it's not going to blend out um, easily that's why you're going to get patches because you deposited so much pigment that you're not going to get an even blend at least in my opinion so that's what, those are my initial thoughts on the Subculture palette. For me, right now it's a go. I'm going to keep on using it. I'm glad I purchased it. I'm glad that it worked out for me. Um, it sucks that it didn't work out for other people. But this is for you, my followers, and to give you guys my opinion on the Anastasia Beverly Hills Subculture palette. Thank you for watching this review, first impression, tutorial using the Subculture palette. Swatches will probably end up on my Instagram. Feel free to watch, follow me on there. And yeah. Thank you guys for watching this video and I'll see you in my next one soon. Bye everyone.